same like I remember when I was six years old, I uh, came to school and every time you made something bad, there was the rule, you need to make a pie for all the others. So like I had to make a lot of pies. Welcome to the Lush Life Podcast. I'm your drinking companion, Susan Schwartz, and I bring you the how-to guide for living life one cocktail at a time. Thanks to my mother's love of martinis, the first words I spoke were shaken, not stirred, and I've been obsessed by cocktails ever since. Together, we'll learn from bartenders, brand ambassadors, distillers, and others why certain drinks are popular in certain cultures, how to make the perfect old-fashioned, when to shake and when to stir, and so much more. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let the fun begin. Our guest today hails from Heidelberg, Germany originally, and he knew for sure He could never sit at a desk all day. Good thing a friend asked him to join him on a trip to Brazil that would change his life. Noah Dorian Matias had the luck to be at the beginning of the El Baron movement to bring the cocktail scene to Cartagena. Needless to say, he has never once been behind that desk. Well, I didn't come directly to Cartagena. What happened was that I was studying chemistry and... A friend of mine had a girlfriend in Brazil, and he said, like, let's go to Brazil. And said, okay. I joined him, then I started traveling, and, yeah, I not even wanted to travel at the beginning, just on the two weeks vacations in Brazil, and then I started traveling for a year and a bit, and then I ended up in Cartagena, yeah. Well, ending up in Cartagena and staying in Cartagena, you know, are two things that really, really... Yeah, I never really decided to stay. I just came here, then I stayed for a week, for a month, for half a year. And I always thought like, okay, I go there, I go there, I go to Australia, I go to Mexico. And finally, yeah, I think when I decided to stay was when my daughter was born like a year and a half ago. It's always love. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Were you always a bartender? No, like I said, like I studied chemistry to be chemist because that was what I wanted to be. Um, But... I started working in, as a bartender probably when I was 19 or yeah, almost 19. I was still 18 in Germany because I, I worked the weekends to make some money, extra money while I was studying. I always like cooking and drinking and eating. Same like I remember when I was six years old, uh, I came to school and every time you made something bad, there was the rule you need to make a pie for all the others. So like I had to make a lot of pies and my mom always said like, the moment you can read, the mo- that's the moment you can cook. So she gave me a book said like, this is an easy apple pie, just read it, make it step by step. And is this a German thing? If you do something bad, you have to make a pie for someone? In my school it was like this, yeah. <laughs> so like, but she said, like the first two or three pies, she made them and then... Like um, a fruit pie? Yeah, it's like like any any cake basically. I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> so like every, every Friday night or Friday after school, like... You have all the cakes from... So you were really bad, right? And that's why you were making lots of pies? I, I think I always had a strong personality. <laughs> I'm only teasing you. And I liked... Yeah, if I didn't like something, I didn't do it. Yeah. But you liked chemistry. I loved chemistry, no? Like, I, I think we're pretty good in this. I won a, a thing called Jugend First, like a young people or young kids science competition in this. And I thought I'm going to be chemist for sure. But the moment you... You study, it's fun. The moment you end studying, you're just sitting in an office. And I'm not for an office. I'm not made for an office, no. So you had your daughter here. Exactly. And had you started Elberon yet? Sorry? Had you started Sure, Elberon? yeah. Like, like when the thing with Elberon was really funny as well, because I got offered a job in Perth in Australia. And I thought, okay, I go there and i going to sail from Panama to Australia. And was this a chemistry job? No, 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 no. In the mines. Oh boy. Yeah, it was good money. I thought, like, yeah, I can work there for a bit and then keep on traveling. Yeah. And then I met Juan David. He's the owner of El Baron and the owner of the house. And then he said, like, yeah, I'm going to open a bar. And I was presenting Citadel, a French gin brand, in, a, uh, in an event. And he said, like, yeah, uh, I'm going to open up a bar. If you want to have a look? And she gave me his, his email and he asked me, what should I buy? Because there was just one good bar at this moment in Cartagena, still one of my favorite ones, Demento. 
Um, and I sent him a list. Nothing like two weeks later, he wrote me back and he said, like, I went to New York and I just bought everything you wrote down on this list. I said, like, hmm, that sounds interesting. So we met here and yeah, we basic, I basically came in here. There was nothing. It was How many years empty. ago was this? Four and a half years ago. Hmm. And yeah, we, then I said, I like this, I like this. And like next day, we, we decided to work together and then I was his first employee. I built up the team of the service of the beverage program, we trained everybody. And like, Month later, I said, Juan, you hired me. You never tried a drink of from myself. And he said, like, and they said, like, and I'm working for you. And we never even signed a contract. So it was like, it worked like from the first day, I think, that we, everything went great. Um, yeah, so that's how it started. You must have been quite a sophisticated bartender because this is quite a sophisticated bar. I mean, the bar drinks, the bar menu is quite modern. Um, where did you get that training? I think in general, like, what I do when I a bit off, like, I, I read about drinking, I read about eating, and I cook and I make things back home. So, like, I try, I, I see something new, I do it, yeah. Um, the second thing is, uh, I traveled a lot, I see different drinking habits in different countries, and I think the last one is to be well connected. Yeah, I think one of these things um, where I was well connected in Europe, then I made a lot of contacts in the U.S. and South America, and in 2015 and 2014, when I was competing in the world class competition, I think I made a lot of connections there as well. Yeah, and then you get Cartagena is a city with a lot of input. I mean, like, yeah, I live, you see, like, so many park attendants from Hotel Dead Rabbit, um, employees only. Everybody has been to El Baron, and I've been constantly in touch with them. Yeah. That's fantastic. So when you were starting um, the bar, did you have some kind of concept in your head of what you wanted the drinks menu to be like, the look of it? Sure. No, I think my style in general is like really classic. That was what I loved. Um, that was, I like the history of drinks and the life, like balance of drinks with little, not that much ingredients. Um, that's what I liked when I started this bar. And I thought the other um, reason was they run the profession bartender not even existed in Cartagena. Like, the moment we opened, the bartender was just uh, anybody who opened beer bottles and wine bottles and the bar was a service station full of napkins. You know? A bar, there was no bar. The Mente was the, good, was the first bar, but they didn't do cocktails in these days. So I thought like the moment we open a cocktail bar in Cartagena, we should teach the customers and especially bartenders the basics I wouldn't do like whatever tiki bar or whatever people not knowing classic cocktails and classic um, techniques like mm -hmm. so like we I, that's still the idea because we have Elberon Academy now we're a, a, a teaching and consulting program and Elberon is always going to be the classic bar uh, this year in July we open a place next door and that's going to be different but I think whatever you do in cocktails you don't know the classics you don't go anywhere. Yeah. Now I see the menu that I have here. It's a seasonal menu, volume six, El Mundo del El Veron. Yes. Um, talk us through some of the previous season's menu and how you came to this one. Um, like the previous menus, I think we had like we, we just tried to show people different liquors which weren't that common here. So like say tequila menu because people didn't drink that much tequila here. Um, then the Amaro menu that was like complete, you know, for people. People didn't even know the Amaro's existing here. Uh, but we do now. Alberon has one big thing. There's a lot of identif identification between the workers and the place. It's like from our seven bartenders, four have Alberon tattoo and the others have like... Um, people really stay here. Yeah. And the other thing is you work one brand in the company. Elberon is a brand. It's not only a bar, it's a brand that produces music and they produce different stuff. Gives you a sub-brand. So like, the, and the sub-brand is a fake profession. Mine is a balloon driver, for example. Um, and for example, the elephant, the elephant in here. So I have all the things you say, all the new menus which comes out are fake professions of workers at Elberon. Okay? So and the moment you get this fake brand, El Baron invests in your personal branding, okay? Okay. So I think like, um, I think everybody who stays here for a while, it's a lot, it's a big publicity and a lot of people know, um, they travel them like we go, 
this year I have like events outside of Colombia, Mexico. I have events in New York, Miami, Chicago. So like bars from outside of uh, of South America recognizing our work and inviting us because this brand gives us a lot of publicity. Um, this is basically a thank you menu probably from Juan La Vida, the owner and the bar to everybody in the team who stayed for a while and loves building up anything new in this team. And the fake profession is analyzed by the, uh, by the brand comp branding company, analyzing our uh, personality. So it's like, it's like they build up a big story behind this because it's, it's complex. El Baron is always traveling, the, the, the figure, El Baron, uh -huh. and sending stories, postcards, coasters from everywhere. So if you see any, any coast in El Baron, let's see this one, Floridita, because he was just in Cuba and he fell in love there. There's a comic, there's a story. And the, co and the story is going to include our personalities in the future. Okay? All right. So like everything comes together. All right. You may talk us through one of the drinks. I think the most simple drink uh -huh. um, when it comes to the presentation is your logo Galactica. So basically, how would you say this in English? Um, it's an Galactic geology? No. It, it's like it doesn't exist like this, no. but uh, basically the idea of this cocktail was I can see show you the coaster, then you're gonna understand. So let's see this coaster. That's the special coaster from this drink. Okay. Oh boy. So basically, the idea is to have a really complex whiskey cocktail, and the moment you drink it, you have no idea where this flavor comes from. So we make a cocktail with bitters and Scotch whiskey, and and bourbon, and then we age it with milk vacuum sealed for a week, and then so it, it's, it's a lot of different strange flavors come up. And then we cut the milk with lime juice or citric acid or ascorbic acid, depending on the occasion. And then we filter the milk out again, so there's no milk stays in the drink, but it changes a lot of the flavors. So basically, the, the cocktail itself is, is interesting. Then you serve it over a crystal clear ice sphere in this glass. And the moment you drink half of your drink, all the stars, which are the ingredients of the drinks, become bigger. And then you can, from up here, you can see like all the names big, like a, how you call this? Yeah, telescope. Like a telescope, basically, yes. So you can, can see the stars afterwards. So really now, you're a romantic chemist. Yes. Right? Yes, I am. I'm really a romantic chemist. Yeah. <laughs> I think All it's right. always about an experience, about playing. People don't come to a bar because they're thirsty or to a restaurant because they're hungry. And there's something... Yes. Like, we, like if not, it's not only f f just for the clients, it's for us. If not, it's boring. It's, like, it's something we don't even tell them, but then they drink half of the drink. They see, have a look in there, and then you have a look in there. Oh, they see caramelo. <laughs> this yeah. drink I have to try. Yeah, sure, you have to. All right. Yeah, and, and the ice is another thing. Um, to, to have an ice guy in ice production in Cartagena is pretty difficult because it's so hot. Yeah? So we have one ice guy, and he's just producing all the different types of ice. Yeah? Did he exist before you existed? Uh, it's the father of Juan David. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but he never made it, so we, we have the, the, perf the process of perfection, we made them together, and then he, he even brought it to a different level. Like when he started doing crushed ice, it was insane. He hit every cube by himself, and then he filtered it, and then he said, I just take out the diamonds. It's so much, <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. I love it, you're all romantics here. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks to Noah for showing me his El Baron tattoo and explaining how to see the stars on a coaster. You really need to go to Cartagena to taste this one. But hey, maybe you can make it at home. For now, it's time for our cocktail of the week. You heard Noah describe the Geologa Galactica, and I think this may be one of the hardest cocktails of the week to try at home. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't give it a go. Mix all the following ingredients together in a container. 300 milliliters of bullet bourbon, 150 milliliters of Johnny Walker double black, 230 milliliters of caramel syrup, and 300 milliliters of lime juice. Then add 600 milliliters of whole milk slowly, bit by bit on the top. Don't stir. Then put the container in the fridge for about six to 10 hours. Take it out after that and filter with paper coffee filters. Store it in the fridge and then serve over ice cubes. 
Unfortunately, to get the full effect he describes, you have to go to El Baron in Cartagena. You'll find this recipe and all the cocktails of the week on alushlifemanual.com, where you'll also find all the ingredients in our shop. Heading to Cartagena soon? You'll find out more about where else to drink, eat, shop, and sleep at bestbitsworldwide.com. Next week, I'll be launching my new Lush Guide to Ghent. Go to alushlifemanual.com and sign up for my newsletter to get it sent to your email inbox next Tuesday morning. Until next time, bottoms up. Thanks for listening to the Lush Life Podcast the sister of A Lush Life Manual. For more information and links to everything you heard, plus a bit more, please visit alushlifemanual.com. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation. And always drink responsibly. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. Lush Life is produced by Evo Terra, and I'm your hostess, Susan Schwartz. I'll see you at the bar.